Welcome back into the ASUG News Studio. My name is Tom Wilgum. I'm the co-editorial director of ASUGnews.com. Well, we are very happy to have Cindy Housen in the studio today. Thank you, Cindy, for coming by. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Yes, we, had, we, should, we actually had you last year as well, I think, in the yes. studio. So um, maybe we'll start off there because um, hearing what you heard today, thinking about what you've heard from SAP, is there a lot of difference between last year's message at SBOC? If we can, I can barely remember last week, but if, you can, if we can go back, you know, the stuff we heard today, on-demand EPM on Han, I mean, that's revolution. I'm just wondering, how do you think SAP's done in the last year with their BI messaging? Okay, so like you, <laughs> I, I don't know, I have to pull up my blog right, from last true. year. But um, I will say versus a year ago and now, what I'm happy to see is I think SAP is innovating faster and better than they were before. So even before today, there's been a lot of releases this year with um, visual intelligence, sure. the predictive analytics, and of course the big news this morning was the EPM in the cloud. Right. So that, that is revolutionary for them. Yeah, no, I was thinking too that we had Sanjay up after his keynote, and we were kind of discussing that, and at first glance it would be like, okay, EPM on demand, whoop de doo right? Kind of, in a way, I mean, even though that's hard to do, but then you talk about HANA underneath, and I think there are a lot of layers there that can form the basis of their messaging going forward and reaching customers and saying, wow, not only is this kind of a hybrid on-demand strategy, but you also got HANA underneath it, and that's pretty strong for customers who want to do that and, but don't want to spend X million on a HANA on-premise. Right, that's true. I think SAP is doing well with their HANA strategy, mm -hmm. or I would say the whole in-memory approach. I sure. think they have really good momentum there. I like the way they've been feeding the market, giving the experience HANA and HANA in the cloud. Sure. Um, but I'm also one of those skeptics. How much do people really want to do in the cloud? The cloud is not, it's not the biggest part of business analytics or of the whole BI pie. I think a lot of cloud really depends on where your data originates. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to Sanjay, he did talk about that BI on demand, most of the customers were, or, or that Salesforce was a large piece of the pie. Right. So I think it's exciting, um, but it's probably not the most exciting thing I've, I've heard from them uh, in the last year. So you're saying the cloud is um, a viable option, but not when your, your clients, what you're hearing, your research, you're seeing, there are still leery, customers are still leery about going there? I wouldn't say leery, I just don't, I, I don't want to say it's overhyped, it's more a matter of when is cloud right? So CIOs get really excited about cloud, why do you want to spin up your own infrastructure? Sure. That's, your, that's not your core competency. Your core competency for business analytics has to be about how do I get to the data, how am I going to use the data to competitive advantage and find those insights. So I think that's important. You don't need to be installing the software or maintaining it, but the challenge is with big data and data originated on premise, mm -hmm. then what, uh, what's the right role for cloud to play I think still remains an open question. When you look at SAP and how they fit in on the overall competitive landscape, how are they doing there in your in your point of view? You'd have to be more specific. It depends that's um, true. in BI. Uh, yeah. So in BI, they're, um, they're executing well. Of course, they're the number one BI vendor, and, and their growth has been good. If you want to talk about specific areas, the business query, the visual data discovery, the in-memory, the predictive, and then how are they doing with customer account management and support, the answer will be different for each of those categories. Well, we've got the next hour, are you free? Are you, okay, we won't go into <laughs> Look each Look at the one. BI scorecard. Right, uh, that's true. <laughs> Well, speaking of stuff you've done, you you um, new book coming out. Yeah. Congratulations on that. It's called Thank SAP you. Business Objects BI4, the complete reference. Yeah. Third edition. Yes. Congrats. So, Thank what you. are we? What are people going to get in the book? So it is kind of the sequel to the previous one, okay. uh, Business Objects XI, the complete reference. And I have to give credit to my two co-authors and my um, technical editor. So this has been a collaborative. Uh, approach with Elizabeth Newbold, Clark Dewey, and Mark Stockwell. Okay. 
So from previous versions, it's been a rewrite. Of course, there's the new interface, the information design tool. Right. Replaces our beloved designer. <laughs> um, web intelligence, a lot of changes. So that coverage is both rewritten, updated, and still there. But we also expanded the coverage to include dashboards and some of the BW integration as well. And Explorer, of course. Okay. Yes. You mentioned kind of some of the changes SAP has made in business objects. How are they doing overall from a messaging standpoint in getting those changes? I mean, this ASA business objects community is a vocal, passionate. They let it known when they're, you know, we don't want the, the Excelsius name change. I mean, they, they get, do you think SAP is doing a good enough job yeah, so, communicating that? So, um, so that's kind of a two-part, let me give you a two-part answer. So I do think the ASUG community is very important. I know that there's still a lot of standalone business objects, sure. user groups trying to figure out the role of ASUG. One of the reasons why I come here is because you are a vocal community and there's a lot of customers coming here. So I think ASUG helps give a voice to, the, to those customers. Um, I think the communication has really improved in the last two years, but there's still a lot of unanswered questions for the longtime business objects customers. Things like where does live office fit in the roadmap? Where does freehand SQL and Desky fit? Uh, you know, there was a point where people thought they should be using Crystal Reports for that. Mm -hmm but actually in Crystal Reports for Enterprise, the first release, they removed that support. So um, there's a lot of confusion in the details. I think the high level vision has been good, but in some of the details, there needs to be more. There's one customer I worked with, they actually opened a spreadsheet of all their account managers over the last five years and said they'll use Hannah to process all their account managers. <laughs> that's not good. No, that's, that's not, not good. good. You want a strong partnership with your BI vendor. So what could SAP be doing better? I mean, is that, it's interesting because we had the, yesterday the Influencer Summit where they come in and they get that on Varnish. Right. Um, they, you know, when I talk to SAP, they're like, we have to make changes. Products need to be upgraded. People need to move off desk gear. You know, I mean, there's, there's things yeah. they have to do but yet you're going to have legacy business objects customers not really interested right. in moving forward. Is there anything SAP should do? Well, I don't think the legacy business objects customers, it's not that they're not interested in moving forward. You have to give them a reason to. Mm -hmm. You have to provide value. iPad support, huge new thing. Collaboration, huge new thing. So you have to give them value. Why should any customer spend time upgrading if you have not improved something? So um, I liked, there was a quote from, or Adam Finney once said to me, you know, the 4.0 upgrade has been really hard. It's like trying to retool a jet airplane mid-flight. Mm -hmm. And I think his analogy is appropriate and it, it, it is valid and that's been one of the challenges SAP has had. So um, I think they're on the right track now. I think they need to pay much more attention to having a focus of not just making a sale, right. but actually being a partner to those customers and paying attention not to just the SAP ERP customers, right. the technologies there, but it's also if they decide that market is important to them, it's the non-SAP ERP customers as well. Absolutely, I would agree with that. You heard a little contrition today from Sanjay and John Schweitzer as well when he was interviewed. You know, we didn't do as well with BI4 as you know, we'd hoped. I mean, you hear some anecdotal stories about, I haven't been, companies say, I haven't been given enough reasons to upgrade. Do you think SAP has made BI4 irresistible enough? Or do you think with each feature pack that release, mm -hmm. or this 4.1 perhaps next year, customers will be so enthusiastic that they're going to go. Okay, I didn't hear that contrition, so I'm going to go watch you, that interview online. Not during the keynote. I didn't. From hear Sanjay, that. he said, you know, we didn't go as well as we didn't get as. I as, didn't hear it as clearly as as what you're. It was tweeted to. too. People tweeted oh, okay. it. Okay, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> no. I was taking notes at you, that precise moment, but um, or or maybe for sure that version was later than expected, mm -hmm. and the stability was not there from the beginning. So, so yeah, that I heard a little bit, okay. but not, maybe not, I didn't I mean, take it as big a deal. It wasn't like, uh, 
you know. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like we're sorry. It was sorry. Just a little okay. Bit. It was the most I've ever heard. I guess that was my. Okay. Point. Some stuff that didn't go right. Okay. Um, so so that's fair enough. So is is feature pack three there, um, or do I think they're on the road now? I, I think I think that really depends. I think for the SAP customers, they are there now. The mm -hmm. SAP BW and ERP customers are there now. In fact, SAP uh, was saying to me for years, we have the best integration to SAP of any BI vendor. And I said, that's not correct. And because I test the other products, mm -hmm. I could say that's not correct. Um, my latest evaluation, so as of the Feature Pack 3, July 2012, I do agree with them for the SAP, BW, and ERP. They have deeper integration than any BI platform vendor. For the non-ERP vendors, um, no, I think there's still room for improvement. Their pace of innovation has definitely improved. Right. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for coming by. It was great. Thank always, you. Always wonderful to talk with you. My pleasure. For more interviews with ASUG members and SAP newsmakers, check out asuganline.com as well as ASUG TV on our YouTube page. And thank you for watching.